I was given the rather long subject and title for this talk, How Can Startups Scale for Global Growth and What Does It Mean for Engineering? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a journey um, in terms of the things that I consider very important to think about from the engineering perspective as an organization scales. Now, as mentioned, I'm the VP of engineering at Carousel, but I come to Carousel after working for 35 years in Silicon Valley. I've worked for Apple, I've worked for Adobe, I've worked for Yahoo, worked for a handful of startups. Um, and so that's the basis on which I'm going to come to. Now scale, scale for us means that we've had 65 million listings. We have over 300 million images tied to those listings. We have over 1 billion chats tied to those listings. For those of you who don't know Carousel, we are an online um, classified advertising platform. Um, people, they snap a picture, um, they list it, and then they sell the item. Our goal is to inspire the world to become sellers. Everybody, if everybody was a seller, we would have achieved our mission. So we have some pretty big scale. Um, half of all Singaporeans are registered with Carousel. A quarter visit us in any given month. If you reach out to a, a Singaporean here, if you're not, the odds are pretty good that they're on Carousel. Now this makes a great, great um, AI t um, training set, but we're not going to talk about that in this talk. Scaling is what you all want. This is where you get that 20x or 100x return for your investors, is when you've scaled out. But scaling, but what is it you're scaling? What are you going to scale? Is it users? That's what we commonly think of. You know, back when I started in the business on the internet, back very, very early, like 1999, um, it was all about eyeballs. It was all about page views or, or hits. Um, you know, our analytics were very immature then. And it was like, how many users can I get? How many can I pull in? And this is part of what scaling is about. It's about users. And you need to have the infrastructure and the en engineering capabilities in place to do that scaling if that's what you're after. But scaling can also be about data. It could be about a few users, but a tremendous amount of data. Consider this. You're a platform that is essentially an online media property. Okay, that people go to and they read articles. Think about the analytics you have. Okay, now think about the fact that you are a health device like this that monitors my heart rate 24 seven and sends up analytics literally every couple of minutes. I have a boatload more data. Even though I have fewer users, I have a boatload of data. Okay, so all of a sudden I've gone from, you know, it doesn't matter my users can be relatively small in population, but I'm going to have a lot of data. And there's a complexity of data around each of those users. You know, imagine how much data Garmin has. If you've ever been on Garmin Connect, they have all these athletes that are doing, you know, wearing the devices day long, um, using them in training, et cetera. And there's all that data. There's heart rate, cadence, all kinds of stuff that's there. And then there's complexity. Okay? And this is where you really get things start to get gnarly, is how difficult is this? You can, you can have a few users, you can have a lot of data with them and have an incredible complexity. These are the levers of scaling that you need to think about. You're going to need different engineering teams to tackle them. If you're talking about the users and it's an online media property, it's one set of, enge of engineers and what they're gonna need. If it is um, something like a Fitbit or the Garmin Connect, it's going to be a hell of a lot of data about a smaller base of users. And then you can get into the problems that the Facebooks of the world deal with, which is, hey, we've got a lot of users, we've got a lot of data, and we're tracking really complex relationships uh, among them, the social network that you're talking about, and a lot of graph theory and things like that. Now these are lots of challenges here. Lots of challenges here. A lot of stuff to think about in terms of scaling and you should staff up your engineering organization to be able to deal with these challenges. But the reality is, people are always the hardest part. People are always the hardest part. If you get the right people in place, you can solve a tremendous number of problems. And that's what I'm gonna talk about now. I'm gonna talk about three of the areas where I think people are really hard 
um, and can lead to failure as companies scale, can lead to failure when companies are scaled. Okay? So for all of you non-technical co-founders here, this is, the, this is the meat of the talk for you, okay? So first, I cannot tell you how many software engineering projects I have seen fail because they couldn't decide who decided what gets built versus how it gets built. The what versus how. This is an important thing. Knowing who decides what, and this should be your product owner, this should be your product visionary. That person should be making those decisions. But how it's done should be ordered, owned by your engineering organization. Engineering organizations who are told how to implement things end up failing. Tell them what. Help them understand what we're building, why we're building it. But let them build it themselves. This is critical. The what versus how. And if you've studied Scrum at all, this is at the heart of it. There's product owns the what. Engineering owns the how. There is a dialogue. There is a creative tension in there on both sides. But at the end of the day, someone has got to make the decision. Someone has got to make the decision. And if you're a startup, you've got a clock ticking. Tick tock, tick tock. Those decisions need to be made quickly. They need to be made crisply. They need to potentially not be the optimal decisions. They need to be the 80% decisions that are made today. The next place that I think is really important is startups are, you know, we go to the lean startup, we talk about MVPs, we talk about delivery of customer value. It's all very, very important. It is critical. But as we build, as we build customer value, too often what we forget is platforms. We forget what we're going to build on. So this is one of my very simple diagrams around what is the core of software engineering. The core of software engineering is about definition, it's about design, it's about development, it's about delivery, and it's about customer value. At the end of the day, everything is about customer value and getting it out there. But the trouble is, too often, we get so focused on customer value and the delivery of customer value that we forget that there are shared services we use. And no, AWS and Google Compute um, Platform do not solve this for you completely. Any engineering team needs to be thinking about what is the platform components and what are the customer value. Now, ideally, these customer value teams that we're talking about have all the resources in them that you need to deliver the customer value. So what do I mean by that? They have a dedicated assigned product manager. They have a dedicated assigned uh, product designer. They have a data analyst who's thinking about the analytics you're going to be collecting and how to analyze that, those analytics and what they mean for you. And then you have the resources in your development teams. You have your, your client engineers. So if you're in the world that I'm in, you've got to have someone for Android. You have to have someone for iOS. You have to have someone for the web, building all of those things and making them a reality. And then you need the people who are building the application services, the services that are directly tied to the customer value or the user experience piece of it. And when I talk about that, that team, they define it, they design it, they, devel de they develop it, and they deliver it. And by delivery, I mean they run it. They run it in production. This is key. Getting teams that are built around this model is key because it, it ties ownership. It, it ties pain to what's going to happen. Because if that application service does not work at 3 AM, they're going to get the call, not some group of operations. Now, this is DevOps. This is what I've just described here. This is DevOps. Now, a lot of people talk about DevOps. And I'm going to be honest, they don't know what they're talking about. They're talking bullshit. A lot of people have taken and rebranded systems administration or operations as DevOps. It ain't. DevOps is about defining, designing, developing, and delivering as an integrated whole. If anybody tells you, I'm a DevOps, if you see a job description that says, we're hiring DevOps, if somebody says, we have a DevOps team, find the exit and run out. Because what that means is that they've just taken and put lipstick on the pig. Okay? 
They've just taken the old operations model. Um, this is not, if they say, oh, we've got a DevOps team and we're agile, find two exits and get out of them, okay? <laughs> because they're, they're BSing you. They don't know what they're talking about. Now, this is hard. It is hard to get this piece done right, to get this customer value, integrated customer value stream done. But it is critical. It's important to the success. But then the next piece is, there are things shared across your various customer value streams. If you scale it all, you might start with one of these teams. And when you start out, you're all sitting at the, at the same table. You're in each other's laps. You eat your meals. There's very little overhead in communication. There's little, very little friction. But if you're at all successful, you're going to go from one value stream to two, to three, to four, to five, to six, to seven. What you do when you build a customer delivery team like this to deliver value is you are basically encapsulating, to use a computer science term, you're encapsulating and you're specifying a contract between people. And that's how you scale. But the thing is, you also need to think about not just the value that's being delivered directly to the customer, but what you build on. How are you doing your builds? How are they being tested? What services are you using and how are they made available? Shared services. All of these questions, you need to also have a group that's looking at things from a platform specific point of view, a shared services point of view. And that I call, I, we have two teams at Carousel. We have one called systems engineering that's worrying about our shared system services. Okay? They're looking at things like our data pipelines, our eventing infrastructure, our messaging infrastructure, how we're doing data persistence, um, our containerization strategy and how we're doing that. They run Kubernetes for us. All of that. They're doing all of that. And that's a very important job that they're doing. We could not deliver customer value without that. We also have a client platform team. And the client's platform team is looking at how do we build tooling that can be used to build value delivery on a given client platform. And so if you think about it, you know, I just described I have one iOS person in each one of these teams. Are they going to have time to step back and think about, oh, what's a shared widget we could all use? No, they're not. So you're going to need to do that. Now, this happens organically. This happens just naturally when you're smaller. But you have to become intentional about it as you scale out as you grow. And as you tr tackle those complexity areas that I talked about, those areas of scaling, you're going to need to do that. You're going to need to think about it. I think the next thing, people issue, that you often run into is the build versus borrow. You notice I didn't say buy, I said borrow. Nobody buys software s s these days. They rent it or they borrow it. Okay? It's open source or it's a, a cloud service like Google Compute Platform, etc. And you have to make very informed decisions here. And this is a tricky area. You know, right now, today, should I run my own data center or should I be running it in the cloud? It was a legitimate question a few years ago. But right now, it's an easy answer. God help you, no. Unless you're one of the very, very special cases, if you're a Facebook or a Google or an Amazon, you should not be running your own data center. There's no value in it. And it's going to burn a ton of resources. And part of the, the unique nature of the startup ecosystem now is you don't have to do that. You know, back in 1998, 1999, if you wanted to be a, a startup, the first thing you were like, okay, well, let's go get a computer and put it in a rack. And let's get it all configured and all set up and do that. That's not what you want to do today. Now, your own database or databases versus shared services? Should you be using Spanner from Google? Should you be using AWS RDS? This is a little bit more tricky. This one's harder. This is one you need to look at your use cases. There is not a one size fit answer here, but it's a question you need to answer. Because if you are a company that can leverage those managed services that the Amazon Web Services and the Azures and the Google Compute platforms of the world provide to us, it's a huge win for you. It's a huge win for you. Yes, you can run that stuff yourself. You can run anything yourself, but should you? Does it make sense? Are you adding value to it? Okay? Give it, so you want to use Kubernetes, and you're in the Google Compute uh, platform. 
Well, they, Google Container Service is con Kubernetes. It was built by, by Google. Do you think they might, not, might know how to run it better than you do? I think they might in most cases. So you need to think about that. Remember, remind yourself, you are not Google, you are not Facebook, you are not Amazon. And here's the blunt reality. Most of us aren't gonna reach that level, okay? So do what is appropriate for who you are right now, the scale you are right now, and don't, don't foreclose options going downstream. I love this quote, whenever I deal with the, the borrow versus um, um, builds scenario, I go, hey, if I've seen further than others, it is, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giant. Okay? Sir Isaac Newton said this. And I think it's really applicable to us in engineering. What should we build? What should we borrow? How do we make that decision? Because if we build on the shoulders of others, the stuff that's gone before us, we will be much more successful. Now, there's been a lot of chatter in the world about 10x developers and 10x developers and how important they are. And the fact is that if you look at developers, you can distribute them in terms of effectiveness, um, productivity, contribution, the kind of problems they can solve, that you have developers that are 1x up to that are 10x. I meet a lot of non-technical founders who say, I want a 10x development team. We're only going to hire 10x developers. Well, that shouldn't be your goal. Your goal should be building a 10x team, okay? The reality is that an army of special forces will fail. 10x developers are commandos. They are special forces. Um, and if all you have is an army of special forces, it will fail. You actually want a mix. The fact, the fact is 10x developers, the kind of problems they want to work on are probably 5% at most of the problems you have as, a, as an organization. You need your 4x, your 5, and 6x. And if you bring them together, and if you catalyze it properly, you'll actually have a 10x team. But I guarantee that if you bring in a bunch of 10x developers and put them in the same room, you will have chaos. It'll be like the meeting of the five rabbis who always had seven opinions among them. It's that the kind of issue that you're going to have. And so this is my summary for you. People are the hard part. They really are the hard part. Acknowledge it, start here, and address it. We have uh, two minutes based on the clock. I can take a couple of questions. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this might, this might be a really dumb question. Uh, but go ahead. 